glory to Jesus Christ. And we're reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the, uh, we're, which is published by Liberia Etrice Vaticana. Uh, and this is the second edition published in 2016. And you can also get this online from www.usccb.org, which is the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. And uh, or uh, from www.vatican.va, and you can get a free download ebook from Catholic Culture, Catholic Culture. So let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth who are everywhere present and filling all. O heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth who are everywhere present, filling all things. O treasury of blessings and giver of life, come dwell within us and cleanse our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, and water, one of mercy. God, holy, mighty, one, holy, and water, one of holy God, holy, mighty, one. Have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the heart to your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructed the hearts of the faithful. Grant that the same spirit may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this is page 101 in the Catechism, and we're looking at numbers 402 through uh, 406. All men are implicated in Adam's sin. That we talked about sort of a spiritual genetic disease. As St. Paul affirms, by one man's disobedience, Many, that is all men, were made sinners. And sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all men sinned. That's uh, Romans 5, 12 and Romans five nineteen. So uh, this is, you know, if... A baby who dies, uh, you know, right after he's born, and, and uh, the, there's no uh, child isn't baptized. Maybe the parents aren't, aren't believers, or are uh, or believe in the baptismal regeneration. Maybe they're credo Baptists instead of pedo Baptists. That is, they just they're in. You have to make your own decision in baptism. Uh, maybe that's that, and then the child dies. No, is the child deprived of heaven because of that? Because of, uh, some, or, or is the child a sinner? No, the child isn't a sinner. But the child has the effect of original sin. The child has not committed sins, but there's this effect of original sin. And I like to quote G.J. Chesterton about original sin, that, that our impulse to evil, our impulse to really self-destruction, and uh, as well as uh, that of destruction of others uh, and the like, and also and, uh, sins, it, it, St. Paul said, that which I do not do, I do, that which I would do, I do not do. So, uh, you know, so we have this inclination the selfish, this selfish inclination, this uh, this inclination to sin, but.
but we have but God gives us grace who so God sends grace and transforms uh, for those who are willing to cooperate because again there's no forcing no one's forced into hell you have to earn it by mortal sin and uh, no one's forced into heaven we have to accept the gift and cooperate with the grace so <coughs> So anyway, the Apostle, that's St. Paul. <coughs> Excuse me. Contrast the universality of sin and death with the universality of salvation in Christ. So the universal offer of salvation. Uh, as someone once pointed out, if there isn't a universal offer of salvation, then <coughs> your average person is, is morally superior to God, uh, who would be in the long run, a monster, if that's the case, if he's... <clears throat> making it impossible for someone to know salvation, depriving the person of the grace. Uh, the, and there's no way you can get around it that such a God would be responsible for evil. He would be the, the source of evil. But that is not true. God is love. God is eternal love. God is agape love, which is a very demanding love. It's not some small thing that God will just overlook our sins because we're his favorites. Uh, no. Since we have responded to grace, we have an even greater responsibility to respond to grace. And especially since we know we know the, the good news. We know the message of the Lord. The apostle contrasts the universality of sin and death with the universality of salvation in Christ. Then, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all men, that is, death as we know it, so one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and life for all men, because that one man is not just your average man. That one man is true God and true man. That one man is God incarnate, Jesus Christ. So there's the offer of, of, of eternal life to all. Romans five eighteen. For, this is page 102, following St. Paul, the church has always taught that the overwhelming misery which oppresses men and their inclination toward evil and death, cannot be understood apart from their connection with Adam's sin and the fact that he has transmitted it to us a sin. Again, we've talked that this is not an actual sin, not a, a committed sin. It's, it's a, a, a spiritual disease with which we are all born afflicted. So, uh, and you can show this, you know, you took two innocent babies uh, and you put a toy in between them. The, 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 uh, they'll fight over it and the bigger one will get it and they both cry or whatever. So uh, there's, there's something there. But more importantly, there's God's grace there. There's God's goodness there. There's God's uh, will for our salvation. So... So it's, it's sin we're all born afflicted with, uh, the, uh, this original sin, to use uh, the Augustinian uh, phraseology and approach. Uh, the Christian East does not use that approach or, or that phraseology ordinarily of original sin. A sin which is the death of the soul. Now, of course, the soul is immortal, and this is an analogy to, f to physical death. And the Council of Trent called this the, the death of the soul, the reality of, of this, uh, the reality of, of the power of mortal sin. Because of this certainty of faith, the Church baptizes for the remission of sins even tiny infants who have not committed personal sin. This is for the washing away of the original sin, <coughs> the power of original sin. So see the Council of Trent also. Uh, the, the former citation was DS fifteen twelve, and this is DS fifteen fourteen. 
So, uh, because of this certainty of faith, the Church baptizes for the remission of sins even tiny infants who have not committed personal sin. So, uh, so we're... Uh, so it's really important for believing parents, Catholic parents, as well as or the Eastern Orthodox and, and others who, who know the power of baptismal regeneration and, and believe this, that uh, in that power, uh, they shouldn't wait and deprive their children of a baptism. They should be baptized as soon as possible. Four oh four. How did the sin of Adam become the sin of all his descendants? The whole human race is in Adam, as one body, of one man. The uh, phrase of Saint Thomas Aquinas, in On Evil, De Malo, four one. The whole human race is in Adam as one body of one man. By this unity of the human race, all men are implicated in Adam's sin, as are implicated, but all are implicated in Christ's justice, in Christ's uh, transformation power. But uh, unlike our uh, being conceived and being, and being born, uh, which we don't really have a say over, right? Uh, but we can living have a say over if I'm going to live born again or not, if I'm going to live in God's grace or not. It's my choice as time goes on. So, uh, and I have, uh, as, as I mature, I have wider and wider perspectives, wider and wider choices, wider and wider responsibility. Still, the transmission of original sin is a mystery that we cannot fully understand. And we do know by revelation that Adam had received original justice and holiness, not for himself alone, but for all human nature. So that's what uh, uh, in, in the first human beings is the, uh, <coughs> the seed of, of <clears throat> the maturing of the whole human race. And it's and we're to live in that original justice, pursue that original justice, I should say, and even better, receive that original justice from God, as, and, and which will be <clears throat> perfected in the reality of heaven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which will also involve the bodily resurrection in the end with the immortal bodies as well as immortal souls and true unity of body, soul, and spirit rather than the conflict that we live in here and the ignorance. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> By yielding to the tempter, Adam and Eve committed a personal sin. But this sin affected the human nature that they would transmit in a fallen state. So to use a, a medical analogy again. So let's say I uh, contract a disease uh, by my own fault. You know, I knew that this, I could get this disease <coughs> through particular actions, whatever. But, and... Uh, but then it affects me genetically and I can transmit this or, or it affects me in a way so that, that I transmit it to my child. Now my child is completely innocent of this. It's my sin, yet there's that effect. The, the punishment of that, so of, of this is, is passed down uh, uh, from, because of my, my folly, my sin. Uh, my selfishness, or whatever it was, involved in that. <clears throat> so.
So, and there's no uh, inheriting of guilt. You have to be guilty, meaning you have to have done something or uh, had uh, intended negligence uh, for something to do that. It's, uh, uh, the guilt isn't passed down. No, in uh, some Western theologies, that is, that is so, but uh, uh, that makes absolutely no sense. And it's totally contrary to divine justice and mercy and goodness. So uh, I'm guilty for what I've done. And I'm guilty for not uh, undoing things according to my abilities that have been passed down to me that are wrong. So, and I'm, I can be guilty of a cultivated ignorance. I don't want to find out about the things. Because I'm comfortable with this. I don't want to uh, upset any apple carts to mix my metaphors. But I am. I'm called to transformation. I'm called to conversion. And God's grace is far more powerful than sin. The infinite power of divine grace. The, the very divine energies. Uh, so, uh, but... We can, as, as all-powerful as that is, my human will can say no. I can resist grace. I can reject grace. I can reject God. I can reject goodness. I can reject uh, a growth in virtue of, of, through my selfishness or various other things, through my pride and various other sins. So this sin affected the human nature that they would transmit in a fallen state. So again, see the Council of Trent, DS 1511 through 1512. So uh, some uh, anti-Catholics uh, accused the Council of Trent of, of, of being Pelagian. Uh, Pel Pelagia Pelagianism is, the, not only is there no original sin, there's no... Uh, we're just responsible for what we do, which is, there's a truth to that, but uh, we pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. And God may reward us with grace, but he doesn't, uh, uh, but the Catholic, uh, which it was the Catholic slash Orthodox Church uh, was what condemned Pelagianism. It, uh, it named it uh, long before the uh, the Protestant Reformation a thousand years before the Protestant Reformation, so um, in, the, in the Council of Trent, you have to, you a lot of the people who attacked the Council of Trent. I I don't think they've ever read it, or some line taken out of context is often what they they, they know. So uh, that's also true of people. And sorry, people know who, you know, the Augsburg Confession, blah blah blah, and they said. Have you ever read the Augsburg Confession? Then it turns out they never have done that, never read it. Uh, so then they're attacking it for, and they don't know. So there are, as Catholics, we would see flaws in in that, perhaps. Uh, Pope Benedict said, you know, there's there, there's so much exalted in the Augsburg Confession, so much we could learn from, but uh, and so much that's Catholic in it, but. Uh, uh, that's for, for confessional Lutherans would have that, but uh, a lot of people don't, you know, it, 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 the, the temptation is to uh, say stuff that you don't really know anything about and, uh, and not to uh, go to primary sources, especially about uh, people who are other in, in any way. <coughs> it is a sin which will be transmitted by propagation to all mankind that is by the transmission of a human nature deprived of original holiness and justice and that is why original sin is called sin quote unquote only in an analogical sense it is a sin it is contracted like a disease and not committed a state and not an act so it's really not sin in, in the, the in the ordinarily sense of the word. 405, although it is property to each individual, so everything, just as 
the uh, 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 sanctity is unique to each individual. So this original sin is. Again, this is from the Council of Trent, DS 1513. Original sin does not have the character of a personal fault in any of Adam's descendants. It is a deprivation of original holiness and justice. But human nature has not been totally corrupted, so that's a contrast to <coughs> the total depravity of, <coughs> of five-point Calvinism, for example. <coughs> so, the human nature has not been totally corrupted, but it's been severely weakened and really, uh, uh, if left on our own, is doomed. But God doesn't, God who is love, God who is justice, God who is mercy, merciful, doesn't leave us in that predicament. He reaches out, again, this is an analogy, of course, reaches out his hand to us in the reality of grace. Because without that, we cannot rise. Without uh, grace, uh, there's nothing but spiritual death. Again, an analogy, yes. So, Where was I? Uh, the human nature is wounded. It, so it's better to say, some people say, uh, uh, our, uh, it's better to say our, our, our fallen situation uh, than to say corrupted, uh, totally corrupted, well, to say totally corrupted human nature is, we reject this heresy, but, uh, but, we have to be totally dependent on God's grace. So it is wounded in the natural pro powers prior to it, sub uh, proper to it. So we're uh, we're affected all the way through that so in our intellect, in our will, in our emotions, uh, in uh, even physically uh, by this. Subject to ignorance, suffering, and the dominion of death, and inclined to sin. So, an inclination to evil that is called concupiscence. Baptism, by imparting the life of Christ's grace, erases original sin, but we still have the effects, of course, we still have to have the struggle, and turns a man back toward God. But the consequences for nature, weakened and inclined to evil, persist in man and summon him to spiritual battle, because man means human being. 406. The Church's teaching on the transmission of original sin was articulated more precisely in the 5th century, especially under the impulse of St. Augustine's reflections against Pelagianism, and in the 16th century, in opposition to the Protestant Reformation. That was between the the opposite of Pelagianism, uh, opposite heresies. In the 16th century, in opposition to the Protestant Reformation, the Protestant Reformations, we should probably say, <coughs> Pelagius held that man could, by the natural power of free will, and without the necessary help of God's grace, lead a morally good life. He thus reduced the influence of Adam's fall to bad example. The first Protestant reformers, on the contrary, taught that original sin has radically perverted man and destroyed his freedom. They identified the sin inherited by each man with the tendency to evil, the concupiscence, the concupiscentia that uh, we mentioned earlier, which would be insurmountable. The Church pronounced on the meaning of the data of revelation, an original sin on original sin, especially in the Second Council of Orange in 529 when Pelagianism was condemned, AD, 529 AD, and at the Council of Trent in 1546. So see uh, DS 371372. So let's look and see what 
wrong place. What Catechism of the Catholic Church with Theological Commentary, edited by Archbishop Rino Finiscella, published by, in English by Our Sunday Visitor, 200 North Plaza, Huntington, Indiana. This is a, a really good book to have. Uh, so in 2019, published in 2019. And this is uh, uh, Cardinal Ladaria, Luis S. Ladaria, if you pardon my pronunciation, Ladaria, uh, however it's really pronounced. Uh, and this is 731, page 731. Sin begets sin. This appears already at the beginning of history. The consequences of the sin of Adam and Eve, beyond their expulsion from paradise and the new life situation in which they found themselves, are also manifested in new sins that are committed, doubtlessly a consequence of the, the new state of isolation from God in which the human being finds himself outside of paradise. So the initial revolt <coughs> results in isolation by pulling, well, it's the intent uh, to pull myself away from God, but of course you lose all everything else that's connected with, that's rooted in God uh, from that. Most of all, Cain's fratricide, murder, as the, 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 uh, as, as the, the great sacrilege in which he kills his brother Abel, in which, after the growth of the mass of sin, goes on far, so far as to provoke God to say that he repents of having created man on the earth. Then comes the flood, from which only a few are saved. But the history of sin in the world does not stop with that. The sin of Adam and Eve is the beginning of a history and a chain of sin that will sweep away all of humanity. We said a little about a little while ago that the sin of Adam is the paradigm and model of every sin. Now we see that it is more than that. It is the same time, but unleashed a force of sin that sweeps away and envelops all men. It seems very significant to me that the Catechism of the Catholic Church makes reference to this problem. At times, in the context of the doctrine of original sin, the only problem dealt with is how it is possible that a child who comes into the world has contracted this, etc. These questions are not being forgotten, as we shall see. Moreover, we shall see that even this concatenation, I yes, I had read this earlier, but I think it's worth repeating, got the, the chain, uh, uh, the links uh, coming together, uh, of sins, this universality of sin must be seen in relation with the original breach of friendship with God. And it's said, recall that the magisterium of the church has spoken of structures of sin by uh, St. John Paul II. So in reality, this is down at the bottom of page 731. In reality, the text already began to speak of these consequences. It indicated that after the sin of Adam, an invasion of sin into the world was produced. Now it deals with making a step forward, that is, to see the close link that exists between Adam's sin and sinful men. As was said at the beginning the, of this paragraph, the doctrine of original sin comes par, becomes part of the doctrine of redemption. And of course, it's, it's the redemption that's, that's the focal point. But the redemption would make a sense if there's nothing to be redeemed from. Hence, the Pauline quotations of Numbers 402, the universality of sin as a consequence of sin, that at the same time the universality of salvation in Christ. So the Catechism is moving in Pauline coordinates. So that it's uh, uh, the track that's set is that which is uh, set by St. Paul in the, uh, the reality, in Adam all, all have sinned, in the new Adam all can be saved, all can be transformed, all can be restored. Yeah. The consequence of sin of Adam at the same time, the universality of salvation, the universal offer of salvation in Christ. Because we can say, no, no, 
we can, by mortal sin, we can reject that. Number 303, and we, we're going up to 303, 403, oh, 403, rather. We're going to 406, as we read in this of this. So this is page 732. 403 repeats say, the some statements that we already know. The evils that afflict man, particularly his inclination to evil, are not understood without the link with Adam's sin or prescinding from the fact that he transmitted a sin to us that relates to us all from our birth and is the, quote, death of the soul. In the commentary, we must dwell on this affirmation of undoubted theological interest. Yeah, so a, a human interest as well. If it's the reality of, uh, of uh, quote unquote, death of the soul, the analogy of that. Following the teaching of the church, in particular the Council of Trent, the text says that as a consequence of the sin of Adam, man is a sinner even before a free choice in his part. So sinner is put in quotes. We're affected by sin. We're, uh, you know, just as an innocent can have diseases, uh, so uh, physical, uh, medical diseases, uh, so it is with spiritual disease. Later, the meaning of being a sinner in, in this way will be defined further. For now we hold this because of the sin of Adam and by the fact of birth itself, well, indeed, to, uh, conception itself. A sin is transmitted to man. Again, it should be put in quotes. Uh, because of this, a child who cannot yet have sinned personally is really baptized for the remission of sins. The Council of Trent affirms that this formula is true and not false, including the case of a child, an infant, who doesn't, uh, you know, has, doesn't have consciousness, as far as we know, conscious, as far as we define it ourselves. Uh, full consciousness, anyway. 404 addresses a more difficult point to the doctrine of original sin. How can the sin of Adam be a sin, the sin of all? The answer is naturally very nuanced and is given at various times. First, the Catechism speaks of the unity of human nature, to which the Catechism of the Catholic Church has referred previously in uh, Numbers 360 and 361. Unity in Adam, but also unity in Christ. Unity in the old Adam, in the... Uh, uh, and uh, and division in, our, in the old Adam. Well, but unity in the new Adam, Jesus Christ, and uh, and the healing and reconciliation and, and the reality of forgiveness of committed sins, also. So the unity of all men is what makes it possible for all of us to be implicated in the quote unquote guilt of Adam. Uh, as in the justice of Christ, yeah, even though we don't have guilt, no, actually guilt. So this first observation, not uh, actual guilt, you can have neurotic guilt, you can have false guilt, uh, and you can, sadly many people cultivate that and have been cultivating that, but we have to really turn to the all-sufficient sacrifice of Christ in this, and cooperate with the grace of that. So we're implicated in Adam, in the sin of Adam, and in, in, in human sinfulness, but we're also implicated in redemption through Christ, who has the fullness of our human nature, as well as the fullness of the divine nature. We cannot find a totally rational, comprehensible explanation of the way original sin is transmitted to it. But we can just uh, demonstrate that the, the effects, we see the effects. You know, I may not know how a tornado does what it does, but I can see the effects. And so, uh, 
So we see the, as again, it's like looking in the mirror. If we suppose <coughs> the fact of revelation is taken up, Adam and Eve received original justice, not only for themselves, but also for their descendants. That is, in their obedience to God's plan, and by personally possessing grace, they had to be somehow transmitters of this state of justice and holiness. With the sin that was personal in them, they caused others to be deprived of grace. <coughs> As the human nature they transmitted was lacking it. But God, God's grace is all-powerful. If there's, excuse me, going on, not only resistance, but non resistance, not in the face of, 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 of not just in, in totally conscious uh, participation, but in non resistance, as in the case of a baptized infant. <coughs> Here we have a very special case of something that also happens at more normal and unimportant levels. Since the unity of the whole human race is presupposed in God's plan, it also relates to others in one way or another. So original sin was able to provoke this privation of grace because our progenitors have been called to transmit grace and divine friendship and obedience to God to everyone by transmitting human life and human nature. Given that this mediation failed, but not completely, uh, we say that man comes into the world deprived of holiness and justice. The sin from our origins interrupted this communication of his love, which God wanted to make to us with the mediation of Adam and Eve. The explanation of the last lines is most important Original sin is real to us, but is sin in an analogous way in comparison to personal sin? That is, it is not a sin that is committed. It's a, a reality we've contracted, a disease we've contracted, in the way that we have just finished seeing. It is not an act, but a state in which we find ourselves, regardless of our will, that we can add if the grace of God does not help us, we, in our personal sins, ratify. We make our own, in some way, the sinful decision of our forebearers. We, too, rebel against God in the reality of sin, and especially in mortal sin. So this goes on. But we're, uh, we'll wait till next time to uh, read this. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, let's see who's watching. We'll give away Barbara Biggs, Carla Lowry, Diane Walker Holden wave there and let's put the finish button